Hello. Hey, uh, can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. How are you doing, Jen? Perfect. I'm doing good. Excellent. Excellent. Sorry for the short delay there, but uh, I clicked on the wrong meeting in my Zoom link. I actually loaded up a meeting like a few hours ago. I'm like, how come <laughs> this is wrong? Yeah, wait, nothing's right. here. Yeah, no worries. I wish no worries. I it gave me a like, chance. Though. Let me test my headphones. Okay, they're working. You know, there's yeah, all that. Brilliant stack of meetings that have already happened. It's like, go away. I, want, I don't want to see you anymore. Just put them in the past <laughs> folder or something like that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I don't need awesome. those. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've awesome. moved on. Uh, what's that? Yeah. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization and uh, what you're passionate about? Totally. So I'm Jen Grant. Uh, I'm the CEO of Appify. And what Appify is, is a no-code platform that makes it easy for a company to build lots of apps, whether it's for employees or for their customers or for their partners. And uh, we're all about making uh, businesses more agile so they can, you know, if the market changes, if they have a new product, if something happens and they need to move quickly, that they can have software to underpin what they're doing uh, very, very fast. Fantastic. Now, I, I, hold, I love the concept of no code. I think it's mm -hmm. great. I think it's, it's like we should have had it years ago, but <laughs> yeah. you know, how, close, yeah. how close are we really to no code? I mean, every time I've yeah. seen these no, uh, no code solution, it's like you, you can get a certain level of functionality, but then once you hit that, that barrier, it's like beyond that, it's like, okay, now I have to rewrite this whole thing from scratch and I got to bring in developers. You know, it can't be yeah. done. So yeah. tell me how your how Appify is different. Yeah, and I, I think that's the right question to ask. So the way to think about it is that you put your energy into building the platform. So Appify will sit on top of your ERP system, let's say. So it might be uh, SAP or Oracle, or maybe you know your core system is Salesforce. So it's your CRM with all your customer information. Once the platform is on top, of those systems. So there probably is some coding in, you know, in the integrations, but ah, once so it's on top wizards. of those systems. You do need some wizards in there to do the- you need to get it set up. Yeah, and that, and actually what's, what's important about that is, because um, you're absolutely right, there's lots of no code platform like uh, Airtable or, you know, even Google Forms, you could argue is a no code platform. So they're mm -hmm. very simple and it allows you to do, you know, simple, useful things. But what we're really focused on is giving IT the power of the no-code platform so they can integrate into the systems that they have. They don't have to rip out something and you know, do a three-year deployment to launch this fancy new enterprise software. Instead, they stick that platform on top of it. And once you get the platform set in there, then you've got a very quick way. Um, and in, in the case of Appify, it's robust functionality. It's not just data entry, there are maps and calendars, and you know we're constantly adding new functionality. And you can go through very specific workflows. You can, um, you know, if you create a mobile app for folks that let's say are um, selling. So let's say they're, they go on site and they collect all this information and then they wanna send the project bid to the customer or the hopeful customer. They can do that all in the mobile app and that can all be set up on the platform you know, once it's all hooked into your systems and has all of that data that you've got in your company. Okay, so this is basically uh, for companies that already have an existing back end that they want to <laughs> slap a. Well, I hate the word slap because it's a lot more work than <laughs> it's a lot more work than just slap. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I wish I wish we could get to the point where it's just slap. So it's more right. like uh, build build a front end to whatever systems you currently have. So I couldn't say use Appify to build build a new Facebook from scratch. Like I couldn't use it to do that. You, well, so the nuances, so we do have our own database. So if you did not want to connect to Salesforce or any of these other systems, you absolutely could be off and running uh, mm -hmm. and do that on your own. Right now, I don't know if we could really uh, replicate the UI of Facebook at this point. Quite I don't yet. replicate the UI, but I mean, <laughs> is it possible? Like if I, if I said, you know what, oh, I'm, I'm tired of Facebook. There's too many people talking about I want to do the pol politics free Facebook. I don't know what I call it, but could I, could I come <laughs> to you guys and say, Hey, 
I'm, I'm going to build this thing from scratch and leverage all of your tools and come out exactly. with the anti-Facebook or unbook or whatever. Yes, exactly. Oh. Whatever you want to build. Yes. Because we do have our own database behind if that is what you're interested in. What we find is that the, the, the idea that there's, you know, all of these companies that have these existing databases and systems that they want to modernize, they want mobile apps for, they want to, you know, give their employees or give their customers or give their partners more is very, very compelling. So we've been focused on that. We've been focused on talking yeah. to the slightly larger companies because there is such a need for, I want to modernize my system, but I don't want to wait two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus it's, uh, you know, digital transformation. It's all these big right big players exactly. who say, oh, I need I need a mobile version of this. And it's like, oh my God, it's going to cost me $150,000 and I need to hire right. a, a hundred developers. Of and yeah, yeah, exactly. And that and that is where we, we want to sort of superpower the IT team to say like, hey, what you need is a platform where you quickly do the things you need to do and you don't have to kind of hire a ton of developers or rip out the systems you have. Right. Okay, so working backwards from the yeah. actual submission to the App Store and Google Play, I know app submitting to the App Store is a pain. So do you yes. automate that whole process? Yes. So so the we actually work with the uh, Apple App Store and and uh, Android, and your app is somewhat in a container. So a customer or an employee or a partner would download the Appify app, and then within that little container are all the apps that you want to make available to that person. Um, and then, you know, there are certain, uh, you know, tiers where you can then brand it yourself. So then it becomes your little container that they download with your brand. And then inside it are all the apps that you've created that that person has actual access to. Right. So the last time I did something like this was I used um, Appcelerator, Titanium Appcelerator, uh -huh. which is, I'm assuming, kind of one of your competitors. I don't even know if they still exist. But uh, I remember it was like ridiculously difficult to, and there was this layer yeah. on top, and then they had to create code up below. They're like, I mean, do you work the same way? Is like you've got these, you're, you're encapsulized into this app, and then you you build your interfaces within this app. So you 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 act as an app within an app, sort of. Not exactly. So once, so if you are in what we call Appify Studio, which is the designing part of it, um, that is the closest being inside an app that you would ever be. So that's the place where it's the kind of drag and drop where you can say, okay, let me start by creating my data model. Well, this is about customers. So I want to make sure I have, you know, all of the CRM type information, hook it up to Salesforce. Now I've got my data. Okay, what's the actions that the app needs to perform that the person might want to do? So then you start adding in, here's, you know, you, let's say it's a work order app. So, okay, you need to see all your work orders. You need to know which one's next. You need to be able to search and then you need to close them. Okay, those are the actions that I will add to my app. And then once you're done with that, it really is just deploy. Um, and then that we then take care of because we already have the relationship with Apple and the and our Appify app on Apple. Um, it just shows up inside that little container uh, for whomever wants the app. And of course we do do web apps as well, but the, the mobile app is, is pretty compelling. So we do a lot more of mobile apps. So, so is it, isn't it like, is it, is there an initial delay? So there's the initial three day delay or whatever to get into the app store. And then after that, it's just you know, new versions. Yes, Basically. that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's okay. exactly right. Yeah. There's the initial, once you get your container app, on that app store, then you're adding apps and that you don't have to wait that the, the delay doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing that really annoyed me about um, Accelerator, <laughs> which you probably have solved, is that it's such a blank slate, right? I mean, there's so yeah. many uh, great CX conventions already there that mm -hmm. you know, I think you should just leverage it because you know what it's like, I mean, when Windows, I remember yeah. when Windows first came out, uh, Windows, Windows, uh, what was the latest version uh, version of Windows with the, uh, was it Windows 95? The one that had the bar at the bottom. So the, the chain. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it that went from big, just I mean, a standardized Windows the one, yeah. bar at the bottom. And yeah. I remember reading that they said a lot of companies didn't want to go with it because not the cost of the software. The software was a small piece of the cost. It was like train retraining everybody 
to go yeah. to this new thing. That's why Windows hasn't really changed that much. I mean, the bar is still at the bottom. It's been there for like 25 <laughs> years now. <laughs> and right. it, it, um, they haven't changed that much because that's where people expect it to be. So, right. I mean, is there, I mean, that's the thing with, that bugged me about Excel, Accelerator and other no-code solutions I've seen is that, okay, here's a blank, blank slate, go to it. And it's like, what if I don't right. know anything? Or what if I just want to use best of um, CX that's out there? How easy yeah. is it to put that, pull that in? Yeah. So the first thing I will say is you're absolutely right. I think the the it, it is the blank slate or the you know blank canvas problem. And so the first thing we've done to kind of help with that is that we do have a marketplace of pre-built apps. So if you if you want, um, we have a safety checklist as an example, an Appify app that is um, it's intended for essential workers, like before they go into a warehouse or before they perform whatever service they need. You want them to make sure, do you have the proper equipment on? Is the place safe, et cetera, et cetera. And you wanna capture that information so that you essentially audit that all of the safety procedures were followed. So we have an app that's already built. And so as a, as a new user, you can go into Appify Studio, you open up that app and you can look at it and go, oh, oh, let me just change this one thing. Okay, great, good to go. I'm gonna launch this app. So we have tried to, solve the kind of blank canvas problem. I think in, in, in a componentized way, we also have sort of um, a fairly uniform uh, look and feel so that when you add an action, it's you, you're not getting into the details of, I'm gonna put the button you know, here and, then, and I'm gonna make it circle and then this one's a square. And it really is, it's a little bit componentized, I guess, where you have your buttons, they, you know, they look similar. You have that unified, uh, unified look and feel. Um, and actually what we found, um, so the third thing you talked about is kind of that change management, right? Where it is a big problem. And, and it, you know, we, we talk to a lot of companies that will say, well, you know, I know your app can launch in two weeks or five weeks or whatever, but my people will take more time to learn, to, you know, to get used to the new process. And, you know, we've absolutely seen that hundred um, percent. And I think one of the advantages of a no code platform where you're building multiple apps is that you end up with a unified experience. So as you build another app, it has similar characteristics. It's kind of like once you start using your iPhone, it's really hard to use any other, you know, go on Android and you're like, where are all the buttons? I don't no. know this thing I'm in. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just like that. So once you have that first app and you've trained people on the look and the feel and sort of typically how things function, you can deliver more apps with less of the, the training and, you know, the I don't understand how to, to use this kind of problems that we, you know, that everybody has when you're launching yeah. new products. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's step back a second. And you're a startup, right? So you're yeah. not, you're not a very big company. Um, how like what drove you to get into this uh, into this game? What made you think that this was a good problem to solve? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. So um, so my founder uh, Hari Subramanian, he is amazing. That name so sounds when, familiar. Is he? Did he? He do was something? actually he did do something yeah. else. <laughs> he was the co-founder of ServiceMax. So I think oh, okay. 10 years ago or That's something like that. Wrong. I remember now. Yes, yeah. very long ago. He co-founded ServiceMax. He you know, spent 10, 11 years. They sold the GE. It was a really successful. Obviously, the company is still quite successful. And he kind of walked away from ServiceMax with that feeling of like enterprise software has not achieved what it needs to achieve for us humans. It, you know, that was kind of his insight was, it takes too long to deploy. It never is exactly what the customer needs. There's always customization and all of that requires services. And, and here we were in the SaaS world thinking, oh, this will be great. Everyone will just have this SaaS app and that SaaS app and it'll all be exactly what they want and we'll deploy everything really quickly. And Good. that's, that's not what happened. <laughs> And so, you know, he, th that was sort of his insight that, that got him to, to sort of think about like no code platforms and, you know, the fact that every business is unique and that every business has a different business process and why should they change their whole business to sort of force fit into whatever piece of software they just bought. And so I met 
so about a year and a half ago, I met Hari and I've been in enterprise software forever. I was at uh, Oracle in the 90s and Google oh, yeah. and then I was at uh, Box. It, so I led marketing at Box in the early days. Oh, so it was, cool. you know, SaaS and cloud and it's going to change the world. Uh, and then I was at Looker and we were, you know, data and data needs to be in everything. And, um, and so Looker had gotten acquired by Google, which was a wonderful exit. Uh, and, and, and also a wonderful time for me to go, what's next for me? And mm -hmm. so that's when Hari and I met and we really bonded over this sort of, you know, decades of experience to say, we haven't gotten there. We thought the cloud was going to somehow make everything better. And now we have these silos of data everywhere and you're integrating everything. You still need developers and it still takes six to nine months to deploy anything. So, okay, let's, let's go back to this platform concept. And so I really, you know, love the idea, love the concept of a platform. It, um, every company that I've been at, Box, Looker, it's all about not just one use case, but how do you help everyone in a, in a business with whatever it is you're doing? And so all of those things, you know, and really getting along with Hari and then, you know, when he said, okay, I'm, I want a CEO and like, you're it. I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so it was <laughs> well, great. That's great. How long have you been, how long has, has the company been around? It's been around a year. So I'm oh, in wow. and I started uh, February 25th, I think. It's like practically like, a pandemic company, right? It's only been exactly around. Right. <laughs> I know. And I just had to laugh. I was like, oh my goodness, we moved into this beautiful office. Um, it had this lovely view. I'm in a small oh. little office, but we were so excited. I know. We were there for eight days. And wow. then it was, you know, home. And we've been home ever since. So those are the days where you go, how, how did this, you know, the CEO role was so perfect. And all of a sudden I got to, now I also have to deal with the pandemic and we can't yeah. even go to the office. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's, you know, you can wild. grow, you can grow remotely. Because if you ask yeah. me, I mean, nowadays, if you're going to start a company, it should just be start off remote and you don't have to buy offices or office space or anything like yes. that. So you're actually got in maybe a little bit early if you were just a little bit later and you realize, okay, everybody could just work remotely, but it's still going to yeah. work out, right? Because exactly. I mean, everything that you do is, is, uh, is remote, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and now, you know, you hire people and there's people in my company I've never met in three dimensions. <laughs> yeah. And we joke about that. Like, when do we get our 3D party where we can actually, yeah. you know, see all sides of you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I joke yeah, around that, uh, you know, the, but when all this stuff is over, people are just going to have to walk around with frames in their face around their faces so they could recognize, oh, oh, it's you. I didn't, I, I didn't recognize the, you know, the side of your head. <laughs> I know, like, that's an angle I never see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we did have a couple of our, our sales team in particular got lonely and uh, and they went to a park and they met up and it turns out, I mean, there was just so much laughter because uh, one of the guys that we had hired in the middle of all this is super tall and nobody knew. And, the, you know, another gal who'd been there a long time is pretty short. And so there was this whole moment of like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew you you know i i always assumed we were the same height <laughs> yeah so well, we had a lot of chuckles it, about that are you finding it more difficult a lot more difficult or easier to have, find talent in this environment yeah it's i would say it's some ways easier to find talent because you're not restricted necessarily you know it's not like you it's not like people are like ooh, but the traffic from san francisco to yeah. campbell is too much for me. Like, so we're not having that conversation anymore. Um, I think on the flip side, it's hard to motivate someone over a screen. Mm -hmm. So those, those like final conversations where you're really trying to share your excitement around the vision and where we're going, especially, you know, you're a small company. So they're thinking yeah. risk and, you know, I want to make sure this is the right thing. And you're trying to get across this like big vision. Yeah. Um, that is definitely harder over a screen yeah, than it yeah. would be in person. And it, it's, it's really hard to have those, you know, Friday night beer bashes too, because everybody's yeah. just, <laughs> you got to bring your own beer. <laughs> Miss all that. Yeah, no, we've had, we, we do the little Zoom happy hours and, um, you know, we, we did for our holiday party, I ordered from a company called Cocktail Courier, great 
company and everybody got sent a little drink. Um, and so we could toast to the new year, but of course it's still, you know, we're like, clink. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great <laughs> idea. My, my brother does wine marketing in Canada and his whole, yeah. you know, all of his business dried up because it was all events, right? How do you sell wine? You, you, you throw That's parties right. and you have people drink, right? So yeah. how do you throw parties and have people drink? And it's like, oh, well, we just went virtual. So we send, we send yeah. bottles of wine to everybody. And then we all just, you know, drink at the same time online. I say, it's not right. quite the same, but... <laughs> Yeah, but we're desperate, so we'll t- we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll try anything, right? We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So um, so why would somebody use you as opposed yeah. to just hiring developers? I mean, is I mean, obviously yeah. there's a cost issue and there's a time to market issue, but you know, I'm still I'm still working within kind of a box. Yeah. Yep. So so what what makes it you know, extra compelling to go your way? Yeah, so um, so many reasons, um, but I'll I'll tell you with a story. So the one of the best kind of experiences we had, and we as a company really felt like, oh yes, this is where we fit. Um, we have a company that is uh, in uh, healthcare, and they this is in India, and they had um, developed a. COVID test that was accurate, it's fast, they want to bring it to market. They were worried right. about the manufacturing. That was their focus. That's their uh, their strength. And here's a here's a here's an example where are you gonna spend six months building the software to bring this to market when it needs to be in market now? And so we basically we met with them. And overnight, we were able to show them, you know, just very quickly, here, here's an app that we created just based on what you told us. And it mm-hmm. was that moment where they were like, okay, this is, this is way, this isn't just marginally faster. This is way faster. Uh, and so we ended up uh, in about five weeks, we built five different apps for them that were all kind of, and they didn't, we didn't integrate to any, I mean, they're a newer company that didn't have any existing systems. So we were the back end of the whole thing. And this amazing experience they were able to launch because they could very quickly put these apps out there and then adjust them, fix them, whatever they needed. And so yeah. now they have, you know, it's kind of like COVID testing DoorDash where a customer right. will say, I want to test and the sample collector will come to their house and collect it. And then it goes back to the labs and the doctors and they do the test, they sign off. And then the person says, you know, positive, negative, and now they know, and they can, you know, Fantastic. either go out or go to the doctor and, you know, make sure they're okay. Oh, so that, it, it was amazing. That was 10, five weeks, six weeks. Well, how, was that, was in, how long did that take? It was five weeks to create the five apps. And then since then we've been rolling out to different labs. So we would go into one lab and, you know, hear all the apps and they would, start getting the, the manufactured tests into the labs and start delivering it to consumers. And then of course they turn to us and they say, well, we have this other situation. So there's, a, there's another one where there is a, a festival, a really large religious festival in India. They say, well, these people don't have phones. So can you, you know, can we adjust these apps for this scenario? Yep, we'll add a barcode. Like they get a barcode, they get a number. Okay, great. And then they could come back to the desk and check this number, positive, negative, go. Uh, and so that it's been really, really fun working with them because of course they keep coming up with other things they want us to do. Uh, right. But it is it is way, way faster. I mean, obviously there's an expense there too. You know, hiring a lot of developers can be expensive and then those developers may leave and some of the knowledge of how things were built sort of go with you. There's a lot of arguments in that case, but I really think at the end of the day, it's that agility that, you know, in the pandemic, I think it was really, this is where digital transformation, you know, the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Can you adjust your business model? Can you sell a new product? Can you, you know, you're about events and now you're doing digital wine tastings. Like how fast can you switch and can we help with a platform that makes that easy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, I actually talked to my brother earlier today and he said, well, I want to build a, a Tinder for wine. I'm like, can you guys build a Tinder for wine with your yeah. app? <laughs> That's a great idea. Wait, you might not want to share that. That's a really good idea. It's like, okay, but I'm, I'm like, well, how are you going to do that? Because the way Tinder works is that you have to, you know, you, 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 there's a visual reaction. Right, 
right. person. You'd like, be looking at the bottle. You're like, well, it's bottle? darker red versus. You show a bottle and a person. <laughs> person represents kind of wine. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's that's possible. That is a good point. It's about visuals. It's not about tasting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. Right now, we're more focused on employee apps and partner apps that are much more a part of the versus you know, wildly popular consumer apps, but yes, in the future, for sure, we're, we're, uh, we, we will be at a point where that will be simple. Yeah. So, so like when you say, I know when people say no code, they think no code, but reality, there is code, right? So what kind of level yeah. do you need to build a good app in your, in your infrastructure? Yeah, that's an excellent point. So the, the point where you really do need a developer or two is when you're setting up the platform. So let's assume you've set up the platform, it's connected with all the things you want to connect it to. Once you're at that point, to build an app, really the, the base knowledge is twofold. One is a basic understanding of a database, of understanding how the information, the data connects together, whether you, know, you have a one-to-many relationship or a one-to-one -one relationship, because if you're really building from scratch and you're not starting with an Appify app that kind of has it already done, um, you do need to understand how the data fits together. And mm -hmm. then I would say the second thing is a deep understanding of the business process you're trying to replicate. So mm -hmm. being able to say, okay, this is the task that happens before, you know, you, oh, here's a list, here's a scrambled list of things that it needs to do. It's better to understand, okay, the person who's going to use this app first does this, then does this, so that you build it in a way that it's much easier for them to learn to use. So I would say those two things will still be pretty important. Um, once you get that platform set up, it's still important to have some of that knowledge to be able to build a good app. Right. Now, do you guys have a, like a consulting arm which helps companies do that? Or do you have third parties that do that? Or how does that work? Like I said, I'm coming at you with a, with a new idea and I want to build this thing on top of what I've got. I mean, do, would you help them through yeah. the whole process or is it more of a, so, hey, this is enough for you to just take on and do on your own? Yeah. So right now, uh, most of the time, it's us taking it on and doing it. I think that is absolutely the direction we want to go in because they're going to be um they're going to be experts in particular industries that we may not be experts in and there's going to be customers who don't necessarily want to spend the time to set up the platform and they know they need apps but they don't really have time to think about the data model or any of the pieces of, of the building and we think there's definitely going to be partners that will say okay you know, I'm an expert in this, you know, particular industry. And so I'm going to build apps and then I'm going to sell them to all of my current customers who I, you know, provide other technical things to. Um, right. So we definitely think there's a future there, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. We will. Okay. And then, if there are any partners in your audience, they should definitely contact us because we, okay. we do want to have those conversations. <laughs> sure. So I guess I, I'm, I'm thinking of a, like building an app. You say you talk about databases. You talk about uh, the business. Um, you didn't say business process. What did you say? Business model? Business? Uh, the process is probably fine. Okay. It's, business it's really the, the tasks and how they fit together. Right. So if I, so it's not, you're not just purely the, like the presentation layer because you have the presentation layer logic and then database. I mean, yeah. you actually create all of that. Or not that it sounds like you can create all of it, but yeah. you can create all of it. But some of it's better in 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 your comp in your clients uh, space, and some of it's better in your space. Like where where do, you, where do you where's your comfort comfort level zone? Where like where do you typically fit? Yeah, so typically over time, we want to make sure that our customers can actually build their own app. So what mm -hmm. we try to do is usually someone comes to us with a problem. They don't usually come to us and say, I have a problem that's a, I need a platform for apps. They usually say, I have a problem and it's, you know, I have this Oracle database and I want to modernize it because I want this specific thing for these people. And right. so we usually start there. And what we end up doing is we will work hand in hand to say, okay, tell us the process, map out what you do today, and then we build it together. So we use that as like a training uh opportunity. So we say, okay, so now I'm building the data model. Okay, so now we're building uh, the workflow of how someone might work through this product. Okay, and now we're going to test it, and we're going to put it in the hands of your users, and then 
we're going to show you how easy it is if they say like, I don't understand this button that you can come in and say, okay, rename that or change this process or that task isn't useful. Or can we add uh, some, you know, function like automatically fill in a form because it's always the same way every time. And so then we, we sort of work with customers so that at the end, the hope or the dream is that we can actually step back and we're still there for support, but they feel like I can build anything with this with this product. So that that's really our process and how we think about it. So it, it would help if they had if they had an app already running, like a web based app, like an internal web based app or something like that, and you want to like mobilize it, so you can say, well, I'll take the yep. elements that I think require mobilization, and put them in this mobile app, and we won't give them the full interface because if they really want the full interface, they can go to the, whatever app there is today. But yeah. you know. Say so you want it's kind of like, kind of like just making taking the elements that require to be like for example let's say you're doing a treasury app or something like that and you want to be able to you know the treasurer is on the golf course you want him to be able to prove something so you give him an right. app that allows him to you know look at it real quick and approve it and but he yeah. doesn't have to go through the entire spreadsheet on the app yeah. is, that, is that kind of what we think definitely I mean that's certainly one of the use cases we've done I think the other thing believe it or not is that we do get even in the inter even in large enterprises there's a lot of paper and Excel that's still out there you still use that oh my god <laughs> they do large fortune 500 companies we have found surprisingly going well, yeah they're, they're, the worst. they're the worst <laughs> yeah. they're, they're keeping, uh, you know all the paper people in, in business I think yeah. So in, you know, in some cases, and, you know, when we're talking to a potential prospect, our favorite is for them to say, well, here's my, you know, here's the form that everybody fills out when they're out, you know, in, in their trucks in the field or something like that. And we say, okay, great. And then we just go build a little app. We say, here's that form on an iPad. This right. is what you want, you know, and then usually they want way more than that because they realize, well, it's not just the form, it's where does the data go and what do we do with the data? You know, it turns out it's actually an app. It's a, there's right. a business process behind it. And so then we show them how to build all the, the workflow and the activities and right. things like that. There's a, of, there's a lot of digitization, it sounds like. So that, that's kind yes. of like the first thing that you're tracking. Yes, yes I, I honestly, I didn't think there would be as much of that as, as there turned out to be. So it turned out there's yes. a lot more paper yeah. out there than, than we thought. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So, so let's look out into the future a bit. So it's 2030, yeah. 10 years from now, 10 years, where will you be? Where will Appify be? Where, you know, what do you think the world's going to be like in 10 years? Well, I'll be retired. <laughs> <laughs> You're the second person to tell me that on the show. I think, I, I think the last, I talked to somebody like two days ago and that's exactly what she said. She says, I'll be retired. And I said, what are you talking about? This is your life's dream. You should <laughs> doing it like you can do it forever now because you can do it from the comfort of your own home or or bermuda or belize or Costa Rica. hawaii maybe i'll be in hawaii <laughs> yeah. that's where i'll be i think app when i think about appify i think about just you know 10 years out there is a transformation that is happening in enterprise software and there's a lot more um amazing things that can happen but things like if you take any AI, anything, super helpful, um, super interesting, but you, it's so complicated and you know, people are still trying to figure out like, how do I actually get value out of this? Well, imagine you connect AI and you know, whatever amazing innovation comes and you have a no code platform to easily plug it into your business. And all of a sudden people stop thinking about custom developers, like, why do we need to do that? We just boop, 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 you know, here's our app. And I, yeah. and I would, what I, what I hope is that not only will we have transformed enterprise software, but we'll start to get people like your brother who are creating the, the Tinder for wine or, you know, whatever they, and just saying, let me try this. Let's see if yeah. people like it. I and, you know, Facebook. I want to do the on Facebook, but I want you guys to build a layer on top of Appify so that all <laughs> I have to do is say, can you build me a Facebook killer? And then Jesus, it, it creates it. <laughs> it just <laughs> happens. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we may get there. Who knows? Ten years is a long time. <laughs> Far away, is it? I mean, it's like I can actually go to uh, go online somewhere and I can find a WordPress theme that is like almost the same as Facebook. And I'm going, if I can find a WordPress theme that mimics th Facebook, then I should be able to go to a no-code app and say, do me a Facebook, but I want to call it, you know, whatever book yeah. or 
whatever. And it just uh, and it just generate it like that. And I, I don't think we're we're there yet, but I think it's coming. The question is right. what right? Yeah, ten years is not. It's like far, but not that far. You know, yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> well, when you think about it, two thousand in, in like two thousand and eighteen, Facebook was around for ten years. So it's been around. It's only been around. For I mean, it's like it's a little over ten years. iPhones have only been around for a little over ten years. So ten years from now, you know, anything could happen. Anything can happen. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, I feel, well, have you seen the uh, Apple AR glasses? I mean, apparently, no. three thousand dollars and like wrap around your entire head. I didn't like the sound of that. But Apple Car <laughs> is apparently going to be fully autonomous, and they're already talking to Hyundai Kia to actually build them. So I'm like, that's not oh. bad. That that sounds interesting. So, that sounds amazing. You'd have to be an iPhone uh, owner to use it or something right. like that. Right, right. Surely, yeah. <laughs> they will lock you in. <laughs> so you're not, so you're focused mostly in the enterprise space right now. So if I had, if there were startup founders who were listening to this and going, I got to talk to those guys about building my app. That's yeah. not really your sweet spot right now, right? Not really building apps for consumers. Much more around internal efficiency, helping people get their jobs done, digital transformation, getting those projects up and running faster. Um, if you if you're um, if you're a startup that has a lot of mo of work, you know, folks that are out there doing variety of things, we work really well for that. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you know, we do have smaller companies that are they work with a lot of partners. So they, you know, are kind of outsourcing many of the things, the services that they offer. So that's another, uh, we see that use case quite a lot because people want to be able to communicate and create software for their partners that isn't, you know, as expensive as a Salesforce license or, you know, some things like that. So would I be able to, let's say I'm a, I'm a start, startup founder and I see a, a gap. So there's some enterprise mm -hmm. software and there's a customer requirement and there's a gap. Would I be able to use uh, your platform and then resell that as a piece of software myself or that, that's not how you work? We will get there. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> because, you know, once you launch the Appify marketplace, it's sort of inevitable that we'll be able to offer the ability for anyone to build an app and then sell it uh, and, you know, to whatever audience they, they want to. But Right. Not quite there yet, but that's definitely in the future. So you're not you're not quite a framework there yet, but you're yeah. you're getting there. So we're I can, getting I, there. Yep. Accelerator. I mean, I'm able to just create an app and it'll throw it to the app store, and but there's no accelerator branding or anything like that. You say you can you can get past the branding. You can just have a branded app that has that has yeah. no branding at all. But it still yeah. has to run through the process, and it still has to go through you guys. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Right. So um, anything else you want to close up with? Oh, my goodness. Uh, ha, who knows? I, I mean, I would say anyone listening should come check out Appify because it, I think uh, if you're in a company and you've got any manual process or if you've got anything that's taking you too long or if you've, you know, you're wanting to have some sort of end-to-end -end app experience that is very complex, you're excellent for that kind of stuff. And we're happy to talk to anyone and show them what we do and see if it's fit. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, you'll send me your bio and all that other contact information. Yeah. And I'll put it in the show notes below. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you. And I'm waiting for the day when you send me the email saying, like, you can create your Facebook killer now. I know. <laughs> it's on my list. <laughs> Facebook killer. Do. Create a Facebook killer. It's like, what you need is an interface like Google. But it just says like create, blah blah blah, and then and then just like what do you want to create? And like you know, seconds later, it's, it's, like just, it's, it's, thing. it's right. Slap, it's not speech to text. Talent. It's speech to app. <laughs> yeah, boom! I create a unicorn just like that using your platform. So I think that's where we need to go. <laughs> that's coming. Ten years. That's where we're going. <laughs> Hopefully sooner. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. It was great talking with you. Talk to you later. It was great to talk to you. Bye. Bye. 